The Junon was a glowy reclass 40-gun frigate of the French Navy. Launched in 1806, she saw service during the Napoleonic Wars, escorting merchant convoys to France's besieged Caribbean colonies. In February 1809 she was captured at sea after a fierce engagement with four Royal Navy vessels. Recommissioned as HMS Junon, she served as part of the British blockade of French ports but was recaptured in December 1809 and scuttled off the French colony of Guadeloupe, captured by Britain. On 10 November 1808, under Capitaine de Frégate Rousseau, Junon departed for Martinique along with Villiers-Cutenus, Amphitrite, Signa and Papillon. The squadron broke apart the next day, and she found herself isolated. On 10 February 1809 she ran across a British squadron composed of the frigates HMS Horatio and HMS Latona, the brig HMS Driver and the schooner HMS Superior. June owned the rendered after a lengthy resistance that left the ship entirely dismasted and more than Half her crew killed. She was towed to the British port of Halifax, Nova Scotia for repair, and was subsequently commissioned into the Royal Navy as the 38-gun HMS Junon. Recapture by France. Her repairs completed, Junon returned to the Caribbean in September 1809 under the command of Captain John Shortland, under orders to enforce a naval blockade of French-controlled Guadeloupe. At 2.15 p.m. on 13 December, Junon was in company with the 14-gun sloop of war HMS Observateur when her crew sighted four unknown ships heading west towards the French colony. Both British vessels turned to intercept, with Observateur in the lead. The four unknown vessels were swiftly identified as frigates rather than merchantmen. Commander Weatherall of Observator signalled this information to Junon and ordered his own ship cleared for action. By sunset, the two British ships were within long range of the unknown ships. Observator fired a warning shot in the direction and both she and Junon moved to close with the lead frigate preparatory to engaging them. However, as the British ships approached, the lead frigate ran up a Spanish flag, shortly followed by the British Red Ensign, believing the unknown ships to be Spanish allies. Wetherill and Shortland reduced sail and Junon moved to come alongside the lead frigate to permit Captain Shortland to exchange greetings with her. Captain, at 5.50 p.m., when Junon was within half-pistol shot of the lead frigate, that vessel suddenly hauled down its Spanish and British flags and raised the French ensign. The following three frigates followed suit, and all four vessels opened fire on Junon at short range. Junon's crew were taken by surprise, a ragged retaliatory broadside structure of the French ships but caused little damage. Junon herself received broadsides to her port. Starboard and stern and quickly became indefensible, her crew surrendered at 7 p.m. when their ship was boarded by French soldiers. A total of 15 British sailors were killed and 44 wounded, including Shortland, who was hit by musket fire and then struck through the body by wood fragments torn from the deck by cannon fire. The British sloop Observateur had fired upon the French when the engagement began but Junon's capture was too swift for her to directly assist her sister ship. Instead, as Junon seemed lost Wetherill ordered that observer to make sail and escape to the west. The French frigates were Glorinda, Renomé, Loire and Seine, en route to Guadeloupe with supplies and reinforcements for the colony. Overall command rested with Captain Domingue Roqueb at aboard Clorinda. Roqueb's logs indicate he had not initially intended to engage the British and had raised the Spanish flag in the hope that they would leave his ships alone. However, when Junon and Observateur drew near, Roquebit decided to continue with the ruse of the false flag to lure the British into range of all four French vessels at the same time. The French suffered 80 casualties, including 34 killed. All casualties were from among the crews of Clorinda and Renomi which had come alongside Junon during the battle. Sen and Loire had engaged the British ship from the rear and had not come under fire from either Junon or Observateur. Fate
Junon remained afloat following her battle with Roquebert's ships, but her condition was unsalvageable. On 14 December Roquebert ordered that the surviving British crew be brought aboard the French vessels as prisoners. Later that day Junon was set alight and sank in waters east of Guadeloupe. On Roquebert's orders, Junon's erstwhile captain, John Shortland, was conveyed to a hospital in Guadeloupe for medical care. Despite several operations in the amputation of his right leg and part of one hand, Shortland died of his wounds on 21 January 1810. He was buried with military honours in the French cemetery at basset -Air. Bibliography Brenton, Edward Pelham, The Naval History of Great Britain, from the year MDCC LXXXIII to MDCC CXXII, London, UK, C. Rice, O. C. L. C. 2,609,346, James, William, Chamir, Frederick, The Naval History of Great Britain, from the declaration of war by France in 1793 to the accession of George IV, London, UK, R. Bentley, OCLC 656,581,450, Jenkins, J.K., The Capture of HMS Junon, 1809, The Mariner's Mirror 60, 33-39, DOI 10.1080-0025335919999 1974